Yeah. 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 Yeah
Okay, so what's our slope? Negative one. Yeah. Okay, we have the slope that we want to target. We want to figure out where along the curve is the graph exactly having that slope of negative one. So now we can find the what? Derivative, yeah. Derivative, we'll work in the slope later. Okay, so sine x becomes uh, just positive, okay. All right, sine is cosine, cosine is negative sine, okay. Uh, minus one, okay. All right, what's next? Good, so they go to negative one, right? Set these two equal to each other. Make sure that we don't insert the negative one in for the x, right? That's not what that is telling us. That's not the location, that's a slope value. That slope value is gonna go in for the derivative variable. And we're gonna look, work backwards there, solve for that x, find the location where a specific slope that we wanna try to gather, okay? Okay, add one to both sides, cosine x equals zero. Okay, so let's think about our unit circle values. Where is cosine equal to zero? Power two and three power two, okay. Now, uh, we always wanna start off with unit circle values, but we always have to adjust potentially uh, if we're not inside the interval, right? If we're not inside the interval, we can just double check and make sure whether we can find coterminal angles that do land inside the interval. So um, this is too far to the right. So what can we do to look for some more critical points? Subtract two pi, right? Let's find some coterminal angles. Okay, so subtracting two pi is something as subtracting. 4 pi over 2, just to match that denominator. Okay, now are either one of these inside my interval here? Yeah, this one here. Okay, so let me just make sure that um, we understand how these numbers are working. Okay, obviously, we're in the negative region here from negative 2 pi to negative pi. Um, negative pi over 2 is like negative 0.5 pi, right? That's too far to the right. It's not going to end up in our interval. But negative 1.5 pi is perfect because it's negative 1.5 is between negative 1 and negative 2. So it's actually got to C equals negative 3 pi over 2 because we have the next value that we found that lives nicely between our interval. Okay. And if you get past your first two conditions, this is a guarantee. Uh, with mean value theorem, you're, bet, you're, you're guaranteed to find at least one location. So you're never going to have a no solution for mean value theorem. Not if you get past the first two conditions. Okay, questions with one? Okay, all right, let's try uh, number two. This is a Rolle's theorem. So Rolle's theorem is very similar to mean value theorem. Uh, we're still going to confirm that the function is continuous and differentiable. We're still going to find the endpoints. Okay, we're still going to find the y values, but what is restricted here? The y value must be what? The same, which is going to guarantee that the slope is going to be zero. But other than that, everything else feels the same. We still find the endpoints. Um, we still set equal to a slope, but the slope is more restricted. It has to be slope zero. So we're going to set our derivative equal to zero, assuming that we can get the two endpoints um, to show the same y value, right? If they have the same y value, then if I'm subtracting two y values that are the same, I'm always going to get a zero out of it, okay? So number two, determine whether or not Rolle's theorem applies to the function. Um, for our graph secant of x between negative 7 pi over 6 and negative 5 pi over 6. If so, find the value of c as defined in the theorem. Okay. 
All right, so this feels a little bit more unfamiliar because uh, this is not sine and cosine, but we're going to still work our way through this um, and we can still use sine and cosine to help us out. OK, so the thing with secant is that there may be uh, an asymptote uh, that may conflict the, with the interval. Um, so what we can do is uh, we can rewrite the function as something that feels more familiar. We know secant is the same thing as one over cosine. Right now, seeing that cosine in the denominator is giving us indication that, OK, there is a, a break in the graph, right? Because whatever causes cosine to be zero is your potential break in the graph. In this case, that's going to be your vertical asymptote. Okay. So what causes cosine to be zero? Pi over two, pi over two and three pi over two. Okay. So um, this is obviously uh, too far to the right. We can subtract two pi from these. If we subtract two pi from these, we can see if these um, coterminal angles uh, are going to interfere with this interval. And just to kind of fast forward, um, both uh, sub, if I subtract two pi, I get um, negative three pi over two and negative pi over two. Neither of these are inside the interval, so we're safe. Our function is continuous. And if our function is continuous, it'll also be differentiable. So our, our trig functions will never have any sharp turns. Um, the most it'll have are our vertical asymptotes. So let's go ahead and state our conditions here. Oh, let me specify rules too. <laughs> okay, what's next? Find. Yeah, Y balance. Yep. So no derivative yet, right? Okay. okay. Secant of negative seven five or six, that feels more unfamiliar. We could think of it as um, well. That's fine. The second secant of negative seven over six. Uh, that negative feels unfamiliar. We can always add two pi to this. Uh, so if I added two pi to negative seven pi over six, so plus twelve pi over six, I get five pi over six. And even secant of five pi over six feels unfamiliar, but we know we can just find cosine and then just flip it, right? So what's cosine of five pi over six unit circle values? Cosine of five pi over six is yeah, negative root three over two. So if I flip that around, then that'll be my secant, right? So negative two over root three. If you don't recognize negative 5 pi over 6, you can add 2 pi to this. Um, negative 5 over 6 plus 12 over 6 is positive 7 over 6. Again, we can think in terms of cosine. What's cosine of 7 pi over 6? Good, so cosine is negative root 3 over 2. So if I flip that fraction around, that will be my secant. Okay. Are we going to fulfill the condition for Rolle's theorem? Yes. So the y values are the same, which means our slope must be zero. Okay. So we're just looking for where is the secant graph going to experience a slope zero, and we're guaranteed to find a location somewhere between these two um, endpoints if we made it this far. Okay. What's next? Find the. Now we can move on to the derivative. Okay, f prime. All right, secant becomes. Yep, secant 
tangent, right? Secret tangent. We're going to set our derivative equal to zero, right? And if it feels unfamiliar with, you know, when is secant and tangent separately going to be zero, again, we can involve sine and cosine to make things more um, manageable. So we can always rewrite our um, trig functions as sine and cosine. So secant is the same thing as over cosine. And tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine. So I want to find out where sine over cosine squared x equals zero. Now there's numerator and denominator here. Do I look for where the numerator is equal to zero, the denominator equal to zero, or both? Okay. We, we want to find out where the slope is zero, just the numerator. Okay. Because if I said the denominator equal to zero, then I'm looking for where the slope is undefined or vertical asymptotes. That's something different, right? So just going to be a numerator. Now, if I'm looking for critical points, if I was going through first derivative test, trying to create my slope sign line, then I look for both numerator and denominator. But with Rolle's theorem, we're just concerned about slope zero, so it's just going to be the numerator. Okay, so where is sine equal to zero? Zero, pi, two pi. Now, all of this is outside the interval. But we can see which one is going to land inside the interval by doing what? Uh, in this case, we're going to try to subtract 2 pi, right? Okay, so 0 minus 2 pi, I get negative 2 pi, I get negative pi, and I get 0. Do any of those land inside my interval from negative 7 pi over 6 to negative 5 pi over 6? negative pi, right? Because negative pi is the same thing as negative 6 pi over 6, right? You can tell that's obviously between negative 5 and negative 7, so that is negative pi, so c equals negative. Okay, flip the page. Page 10. Sorry, page, page eight, my bad. Okay, so this is going to be a, a curve sketching problem. Um, OK, so we're going to go directly into our first derivative function and vertical points, slope sine line, all that. So y prime. Okay. Sine becomes cosine. And cosine becomes negative sine. We'll go ahead and set equal to zero. OK, so there's a little bit of a trick that we can do with uh, it doesn't seem like we can really set both either equal to zero. We can't factor anything out. I mean, we can factor the, the two out, but we're still stuck with cosine x minus sine x. So what do you do there? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to set we're going to set them equal to each other first. OK, so let's show you what's going to happen whenever you have a sine equal to a cosine or one of those two equations equal each other, one variations of, of each other. Now, normally, we never want to divide by a variable. 
because if we divide by a variable, we, we're losing a potential critical point. Um, but here, we're not really dividing to lose uh, a variable. We're, we're really dividing to create a different look of the problem. So I want to kind of ha have you guys observe what's going to happen if I were to divide both sides by cosine of x. The right side becomes what? One, okay, because everything just goes away. And the left side, the twos cancel out, sine over cosine becomes tangent. So this allows us to move to something that we can recognize in terms of unit circle values, right? So we're taking advantage. Or, you know, usually we want everything in terms of sine and cosine, but in this case, you know, getting it in terms of tangent actually makes it easier for us to, to see what's going on. Okay, so tangent of x equal to one, that's a unit circle value. Where's tangent equal to one? Okay, so first and third quadrant, so pi over four and pi over four, yeah. So we're looking at the interval from negative pi to pi. Let's explore that a bit. We may need to make some adjustments. Now, pi over four seems to be safe, right? It's obviously less than pi, but five pi over four is too far to the right. It's, uh, it's greater than pi. So what can we do here? Subtract two pi. I get negative three power four, which will land nicely within my interval, right? Negative 0.75 is obviously between negative one and one. So okay, we have everything that we um, have uh, gathered and found in our slope sign line. So now we're going to test, um, find some test points and test it against our derivative. So anytime I can involve zero, makes it easy. Um, to the right of pi over four, between pi over four and pi, um, that's a big gap there. I can choose pi over two. And then to the left of uh, between negative three pi over four and negative pi, I can do negative five pi over six. Again, the nice thing is once you find one sign, then you can just oscillate for the other. Okay? But let's practice finding all, each of them. Okay, we're testing this against our derivative function. Okay, let's do the easy one first, zero. Cosine of zero is one. Two times one is two. Two minus cosine of zero is zero. Two minus zero, that's positive, so positive slope. Okay, pi over two. Uh, cosine of pi over two, that's Zero. Okay. And then minus two sine of pi over two. Sine of pi over two is one. That's negative two times one is negative. Okay. okay. Negative five pi over six, the same thing as seven pi over six. Seven pi over six, uh, that's going to be two times negative root three over two minus two times negative one half. This is going to be a larger negative value here. So All right, what do we expect here? Relative min, okay, and relative max, okay? So we can go ahead and uh, write out our because statements. Don't have to worry about the y values. I know I had that on my key, but we're just gonna focus on just the x values. Let's move on to the second derivative function. <clears throat> By the way, the key is on page 10, so um, I have it in your packet. Okay, so second derivative, y double prime. Okay. 
So going back and forth between sine and cosine here. All right, cosine becomes negative sine. And sine goes back to positive cosine with a negative two hanging in front. All right, set equal to zero. And we're going to get a similar issue here where we're going to try to set them equal to each other and involve tangent to help us through this. Okay, here I'm going to divide by a positive two cosine x just so we can leave that negative one on the right side. So very similar, um, but now uh, tangent is negative one in which quadrant? Yeah, second and fourth, right? So still in the same family of functions here. So x equals. Uh, so um, what's the? Three, yeah, three power four. Yeah. Seven power four. Yeah. So we always just like to get our original intervals from zero to two pi down on paper first, and then we can discuss how we can adjust it to fit inside our interval. Okay. Y double prime. Looks like three pi over four is good, right? 7 pi over 4 is too far out, right? Greater than 1, so I can subtract 2 pi and negative pi over 4. So now I have 2, negative 1 fourth and 0.75, they fall nicely between negative 1 and 1. Think about our unit circle values here. Oh, sorry, um, test points. Uh, so zero. Choose uh, five pi per six. And there's a pretty big gap between negative pi per four and negative pi. So I'll choose negative pi per two. Easier values there. Okay, again, I'll give you alternating signs. Okay, let's insert zero here. Uh, sine of zero is just zero, right? Minus two cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one. Times negative two is negative two. So that's concave down. Okay, negative power for two. Um, negative two sine of negative power for two. We can think of this as a, as three pi over two, right? So that feels more familiar. So that's going to give me negative two times negative one, three power two, sine of three power two is negative one. So that's positive two minus zero. So that's positive, concave up. And here, five power six, um, I'll get um, negative two times negative one half minus two times root three over two. That's going to be a larger positive value there. OK, what do we expect looking at this uh, concavity sign line? Two points of reflections, OK. So we can write out our because statement there. As well as our intervals of concave up and concave down, and then we will focus on sketching the graph. Again, not to worry about the Y values. I just um, but I do want us to find the y values at the end point so we can have an idea of where our graph is going to start and begin or start and end. And then we'll just follow this, the, the arrows and build our graph from there. So practice writing out your because statements.
Um, all right, let's uh, think about uh, sketching our graph. We have our endpoints, negative pi and pi. Let's go ahead and find those endpoints so we can kind of have a, a place to start our, our sketch. OK, negative pi. You don't recognize that you can add pi, add two pi to that. So that's thinking as two sine of pi, which is zero. Cosine of pi is what? Negative one. Uh, negative one, right? Negative one times two is negative two. So negative two. Okay. Y of pi. Sine of pi is still zero. Cosine of pi is still negative two. So looks like they start and end at the same point. OK, so I have two sign lines. I'm going to follow the directional arrows of my first derivative sign line. So I want my graph to be decreasing. Until some y value, don't care about the really don't really care about the y value, but I know that at negative three power four, my graph is going to reach a relative minimum from there. It's going to rise until it hits a relative max somewhere at some y value at x value of three power four, and it's going to decrease back down to negative two. OK, so. So it decreases to some y value of negative 3 power 4, increases to some um, y value at power 4, and it decreases until it hits the minimum. Okay, I don't really care about my curvature yet. I just want my uh, graph to rise and fall based off of what I have on my slope sign line. Okay, next up, my points of inflection is at negative power 4, so negative power 4 somewhere. In this negative region here, I'm just going to target, just pick a random point or pick a point that falls along the path of my graph. Um, 3 power 4, it's going to be somewhere over here. So now I have some target points so that I can connect the dots uh, with the appropriate curvature um, between each of these dots. Okay, so uh, we're going to start off initially. Um, our graph is going to show what a concave up, okay. so it's going to have that U shape. And then it's going to switch over to concave down. And it switches back to concave up, oh. right? But not the full concave up, right? Just enough to get to that point, but then it's going to stop, right? But it's still going to have that, that initial um, shape of a U. Okay, any questions? OK, uh, we're going to start um, uh, another curve sketch problem. We may not finish it, but we will be able to get through a big chunk of it. So page 11, we'll do one involving tangent. We haven't seen one involving tangent yet, so let's do that. Okay, page 11. OK, use first derivative test and test for concavity to find relative max, relative min, POI. Sketch a graph along with any vertical asymptotes if they exist. OK, so here's our function 2x minus tangent of x. Um, I want to kind of remind us a little bit about information about tangent of x. So tangent, again, you're not may not be as familiar with, with a tangent graph, but we do know that tangent is sine over what? Cosine, so that gives you an indication that there is going to be some issues with this graph, right? There is a variable in the denominator that is going to, uh, there is going to be some vertical asymptotes. Okay, so whatever causes cosine to be zero is going to be a location of our vertical asymptote. Okay. 
Where's cosine equal to zero? Pi over two and three pi over two. Okay. Now the tangent graph. Yes, there there are asymptotes at pi over two, three pi over two, but it's going to keep um, repeating itself. Um, and typically, we sketch the tangent graph um, that crosses zero. It just feels a little bit more connected that way. So we're actually going to subtract two pi to see where that asymptote is um, in the, on the negative side of things. So if I subtract two pi. Yeah. Okay, so this actually uh, the. You know, it's not wrong to do through power two, but it's just um, just nice to be able to sketch the graph through the origin, at least with a tangent. So the two asymptotes are negative power two and power two. And just for reference, the normal tangent graph looks like this. The normal tangent graph um, has asymptotes on negative power two and power two and kind of has this positive slope look to the graph. Okay, this is not the shape of the graph that we're going to get, but um, but we do have uh, features of this that's going to show up because it, it is similar. OK, so um, just from um, knowing what the tangent graph looks like, we already know some restrictions that are going on. We know our graph is going to have asymptotes or negative between negative power at power, negative power two and power two. And really, we're just going to figure out what the graph looks like between those two asymptotes. Okay. All right, so let's move on to y prime. Right, 2x becomes 2, tangent x becomes secant squared x. We want to find critical points. Now, when we find critical points, we're going to find from both the numerator and denominator. Okay, Rolle's theorem is just numerator, critical points is numerator and denominator. But to do that more easily, I'm going to get numerator and denominator to show up and find common denominator. Secant doesn't feel as familiar, but we can think in terms of what? 1 over cosine. Okay, so common denominator here is going to be, I want to push those two fractions together so I can get a clear uh, numerator denominator so I can find my critical points. What's my common denominator? Cosine squared x. Okay, I need to balance the first uh, denominator. It's missing. A cosine squared x, so I need to so gonna balance the top with cosine squared x. So there's my y prime. Okay, critical points can come from both the numerator and denominator. Well, the nice thing is, is that the denominator we already kind of found, right? That the denominator is cosine squared x, but it's gonna produce the same thing as our vertical asymptote. So this kind of give us our bookends for our graph. So that's gonna be part of our uh, sign line, but What's different is going to be the numerator. So let's look at the numerator here. So we'll set the numerator equal to zero. Divide both sides by two. Okay, take the square root. What shows up though? We take the square root plus or minus. Okay. Now this may not seem Familiar originally, but square root of one half is the same thing as what? Root two over two, and that is a something that we recognize from a unit circle, right? So basically, all the variations of um, pi over four will show up, right? So let's list them out. List them out. We have plus or minus, right? So all four quadrants will show up. Okay, now not all of these are valid because we want to find only want to just sketch the graph between negative power two and power two because we have our asymptotes there. Um, so power four is good to go. Is three power four too far out, right? So if I subtract two pi from this, I get negative um, five power four, which is still too far out. If I subtract uh, two pi from five power four, um, I get um, negative 3 power 4, which is still too far out. But if I subtract uh, 2 pi from 7 pi over 4, I get negative pi over 4. That's negative 1 fourth. Negative 1 fourth is safely between negative 1 half and 1 half. So we have two 
um, critical points that we can place. Initially, we couldn't, but then if we found coterminal angles, we found two of them that landed in between our interval. So here's my y prime sine line between my asymptotes. Okay, we'll test this against our first derivative function. Um, choose some test points. Um, I'll choose zero. I'll choose um, two pi over three. Sorry, pi over three. Choose negative two pi over three or negative pi over three. Deacon doesn't feel familiar, but we can always find cosine first and then flip it. Uh, what's cosine of zero? One. If I flip one around, it's still what? Still one. Two minus one is one, so that's positive. Pi over three. Cosine of pi over three is one half. If I flip one half, I get two. Two squared is two minus four is negative. Okay. So what do you expect here? Relative min and a relative max. OK, all right, let's just find the second derivative and we'll be done. OK. Now there's something going on here. Before I can find first to second derivative, what do we have to be careful about? That two there, right? I want to bring it out because this is chain rule here. Gotta be careful there. We got to do chain rule there. Okay, two goes to a, a zero. Outside and inside. Okay, outside derivative becomes negative two bracket to the first power times inside derivative secant becomes secant tangent. And that's it. That's our second derivative. Um, one last thing here. Uh, how would I set this up so that I can find my critical points more easily? Um, yeah, sine and cosine, right? We just it's just easier for us to think in terms of sine and cosine. So let's go ahead and do that. So negative two stays up top. Secant squared is one over cosine squared. Tangent is sine over cosine. So here's my y double prime. Okay. We look for critical points where numerator and denominator. <laughs> nice thing is that the denominator is same thing as above. The numerator, where is sine equal to zero? Do any of those land inside my interval? Yeah. Good. All right, we'll finish this up tomorrow. I'll also check homework. I'll send out a reminder this afternoon. And then we'll do related rates uh, tomorrow in class. Okay, go get your phones. Okay. The test is going to take seven to period. I've been studying for it, but it's still a little bit and I haven't even connected all those kids. So I'll just take the quiz for it tomorrow so I can get it back. Okay. Sure. Okay. That makes sense. Well, which quiz do you want to focus? Oh, the, the, the um, five, five, four, five, five. Quiz. Yes. I'll take that. Then I guess it will be easier. Okay. Yeah. And then. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm not oh, rushing everything too fast. That's fine.